Hello, my name is Sean McCool, and I've been interested in event-driven systems for something like four years. I have been studying and focusing and teaching event sourcing and other reactive uh, event-driven systems uh, concepts for uh, uh, at least a year and a half. And recently I've been playing with Elixir, a uh, functional language built on the Erlang virtual machine. And I want to share a little bit about uh, what we've done here in uh, creating an event source feature using Elixir. So first of all, I want to just go ahead and create a scratch file so I can highlight our exact goals and there has to be plain text here. So the idea here is that I have this Telegram bot. So it's a chat bot that it's in a private chat with me and I want to be able to say add monthly expense. And the monthly expense will be related to a personal context or a business context. So I might say personal and it might be um, hosting fees, right? And the hosting fees might be 40, euros and 15 cents a month and it's the amount is due on the 8th of every month so to me this is my command this is the thing i want to do i want to add a monthly expense now when i do that i want to do view expenses and i want to be able to see a list of those expenses back so that requires that when i add a monthly expense some application state is modified such that when i go to view exp uh, expenses i'll be able to see the results and really quick, I'd like to apologize for the sound quality. This is just something ad hoc that I'm recording and setting up very quickly. So let's start by looking at my actual command. Now here I have add monthly expense. The structure is the context, the expense ID, the name, the amount, and the due date of the month. Uh, I'm using the expense ID because I might want to make some modifications on it. I'm still playing with the model. I'm not exactly sure that this model is exactly what I want right now, but the feature is fully implemented. So this is my command. This represents the fact that I want to initiate this action to add a monthly expense, and this is the relevant data. So probably I would also add to here uh, added at or something like that, which would be a daytime type timestamp or something like that. Now, when I trigger this into the system, what it does is it's going to say, okay, um, I don't know what to do with this, but we have this router here, which is a command router, not a web router. So we're not saying this web URL goes to this executable code. We're saying this command goes to this ex executable code. In this case, or rather in general, if you have a command like add monthly expense, it will go to an add monthly expense handler. And that's your application service code where you say like, okay, go get the expense list, rebuild its state to now, and then add this expense to it. Then whatever events get raised, store those events away, dispatch those events, etc. So this code works a little differently because I'm, work I'm using a CQRS framework in Elixir called Commanded. And basically all I do is I have a configuration that says, when I have an add monthly expense command, I'm going to dispatch it to the monthly expense list. And this is essentially just an aggregate, right? It doesn't have to be an aggregate in this case because I'm not really guarding any business rules, but this is a simplified example and we're going to have to move on. Now, the identity here is just which of these fields in the command is the unique ID of that expense list. And in this case, again, a simplified example, I'm just making the context the list. So if I say add monthly expense to personal, then I have a personal list and that's the specific list. Or I can do add monthly expense uh, business and then have this stuff over here. Maybe this becomes groceries and this is a, this is a bad example. Um, probably spend way too much on groceries. Um, so the context is just my own idea of how I want my data to be structured. Now, it's interesting because there's no command handler here, but that's because most command handlers, or at least many command handlers in these event-driven systems, exist to combine a command's data to a specific aggregate behavior. So let's go ahead and go to the aggregate monthly expense list. 
And here you can see the, this is just the, the actual aggregate. What it's doing is it has this execute method. And that takes a monthly expense list, which is, this is a, a functional language. So there's going to be a few differences compared to what you're, normal, what you're normally going to see in a uh, object-oriented language. In this case, um, the actual structure, the actual state of the monthly expense list is a key called expenses. And it's a list, so you can think of it as array, an array of expenses. So that's the actual state. Now, for each of these methods on the state, we have to take the, the starting state as an argument. Then we take the command as another argument. And then finally, we're going to release the new state back. Now, this is a... Uh, part of a framework, so there's a little bit of magic involved, but it's still really simple to build. You tell it, you start with this. This is the monthly expense list that you had before you raise this command, or you send this command, add monthly expense. And then this is the domain event that triggers as a result. So you can see here we have context, we're pattern matching, so that this context becomes a variable in this function. And then we pass this context into this structure for this key. Now you notice this has context, 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 expense ID, expense ID, expense ID, expense ID. You might find that to be extremely verbose or something along those lines, but in a way this is how um, Elixir is doing types. So we're taking and we're matching that this structure has this key and we take that value and we put it into this structure with this key. So this is actually a sort of uh, wiring, a connecting of one type to another, and um, it's it's a little bit verbose when you look at it, but it's also extremely effective in, in telling that you're not putting the wrong thing in the wrong place and other things like this. So when you execute this behavior, it creates a monthly expense was added domain event. Then it's going to know that it needs to be applied to the current state. So it takes the current state and it takes the event that we just raised and it modifies that state and returns it back. So this is the new expense list, and this is just the syntax for adding a new expense to our expense list. Now, this is all the behavior that's needed. We can dispatch that command now, have this event raised and stored in Greg Young's event store database, and that's done. With the code you've seen, this, this feature is complete. Now, we're going to be able to want to view our expenses, so we want to read those back. So how do we do that? Well, we have a special kind of event listener that listens for this event. Monthly expense was added. If it receives that, then it says, go into the database. And this is, this is the, the database name, basically and insert a new record with these fields. So this is the entire code for the projection. Finally, we have um, what's essentially an, a data structure that's pulled from the database which uses um, the Ecto database abstraction layer, which is kind of like an ORM. It's a little bit like an active record in that you see that I'm not listing all the fields here, but it's a little bit like a data mapper in that every one of these needs a schema so that it can translate what the database structure is to the correct types for this object. So um, object from an ontological sense and not from like a class based sense. Okay, so um, what I can do now is query this monthly expense projection for all of the expenses in a specific context, and I have it. And this is all of the code you need to have a command, an aggregate, domain event. I show you the domain event code, monthly expense was added. Here's the domain event. To have all of these events stored into the event store, to have a projector that's listening to that event store. And this isn't like PHP or something like that where it's polling every second to see if there's an update 
uh, to the event stream. It's maintaining a persistent connection to the event store. So the moment the event store decides, okay, you're, inter you're a consumer that's interested in this event, it just gives it to you and you immediately react. With a bunch of systems that are in memory, always persistently running. So it, it's very performant. Uh, the read models are updated very quickly. And it's, it's done in a, in a small amount of code. Now I'm not gonna get into the unit testing of this stuff because it's, it's very easy and maybe that's a, a topic for another time. But I just want to show you how simple it is to implement a single feature to be able to add an expense, um, view it in a, in, a, in a read model back uh, and interact with the, both MySQL as the, as the relational database for the read model and Greg Young's Get Event Store for the persistent event storage for the domain events and as well as the, um, the way that the subscription works for uh, Greg Young's event store and our event listeners which are just persistent and ready to, to get an update from the event store at any point in time. So if this was interesting at all, let me know. I'm happy to have a conversation about any of this further. And uh, in general, I would just love to talk about Elixir and event sourcing. So, so hit me up on Sean McGill on Twitter.